find a pen. I've taken everybody's fish and chip order, but I need to write it down before I forget. Now it was nine fish, two spring rolls, and four scoops. Aww. What did people do before they had pens? Hmm? Feelers dip the mink. They back from the tree like to carve in stuff. Wooden sticks. Hmm, you could be right. Or maybe people didn't write anything down before they had pens. Yeah, maybe everything was spoken and they just passed it on from person to person. But how would that work? I know, here's a secret message. Psst. The eagle flies at midnight. The eagle's flies are just right. The eagle's shorts are too tight. My shorts are too tight. What kind of a message is that? Oh, it certainly pays to write things down sometimes. No, I'm pretty sure there must have been some kind of writing going on before pens were invented. Well, let's start by taking a close-up look at what happens when we write with a pen. Well, first of all, there are three important parts. There's the pen itself. There's the ink inside the pen, and this ink is red. And then there's the thing that the pen puts the ink on, the paper. And you've got to have all three things if you want to do some writing. Back in the days when people used to live in caves, paper hadn't been invented. So people would make marks on their rock walls using mud or charcoal, or maybe chipping away at the rock with sharp stone, which was pretty cool. Except if you wanted to make a list of things to buy at the supermarket, you couldn't exactly write on the wall and stick the wall in your pocket. So it was probably a good thing that in those days, supermarkets hadn't been invented either. The Greeks and the Romans took a step forward by writing on a tablet. They must have had small writing. Just kidding. It wasn't this kind of tablet. It was a tablet like this. That's bigger and flatter, and it has a wax surface. And when you use something sharp like this, called a stylus, leaves a mark behind. Mm, well, that's good, but it's still not paper and ink, is it? They're on their way, though. The first ink was made from lamp oil and berries and plants and things like donkey skin. Well, don't ask me how they came up with that one, because I don't know. And paper, well, it wasn't quite like the paper that we're used to, but the Egyptians, the Romans, the Hebrews and the Greeks developed something called papyrus and it's made by laying out a type of plant and letting it dry. And then came parchment. Now parchment's a bit more like paper, but it's not paper. It's made by stretching out animal skin. But don't worry, the animal wasn't in it at the time. <coughs> in the meantime, the Romans started thinking, let's take a thin piece of bamboo, sharpen one end and fill it full of ink. Well, here's one I happen to have prepared earlier. What will happen when I start to write with it? Well, let's find out. Oh, it just makes a real mess. Hmm. Ah, thank goodness for geese. Excuse me a moment, will you? Thanks to my fine feathered friend, I happen to have this fine feather. Now, people found that if they cut the base of the feather, like this, so it was nice and sharp, and dipped it in ink, it would hold enough ink to be able to write with. Of course, it's not a pen. It was called a quill, and it was the hot thing to write with for hundreds of years. Oh, and here's an interesting thing. Feathers curve. So if you're writing with it, and it curved the wrong way, it kind of got up your nose as you were writing. But if it was a feather from the left wing of the goose, it curved away from your nose. Which is a good thing for writers, but not a very good thing for a goose. And of course, these things aren't perfect. Although they look as though they'd be really cool to write with, they still manage to get ink everywhere. And they didn't last very long. You had to keep sharpening the ends so they'd only last about a week. You know, the time was ripe for somebody to invent the pen. Here is a fountain pen. <laughs> Just kidding. It's not really a fountain pen. A fountain pen is one like this one here. Now, you'll have to come in nice and close for this one. You keep the ink in the fountain pen here 
and the ink comes out at this end in a place called the nib. And when I write, the ink comes down through the pen, through the nib, and onto the paper. Hey, now we're talking. I mean writing. And the good thing about fountain pens is they hold a lot more ink than a quill. So you can write and write and write. But eventually, the ink's going to run out. And that's when the fun begins. Here's something that your grandparents might remember. An inkwell in a desk, it used to be full of ink and they'd fill up their fountain pens from it. But because it's a bit tricky to see inside, I've put the ink into this little container here. Now, you might like to stand back because this could get messy. Right, here goes. Well, this fountain pen here has a little lever. You dip it in the ink and pull the lever down and it fills up with ink. Well, this fountain pen here has had the casing taken off it and it's got a button system. You put it in the ink and push the button down and it should fill up with lots of ink, like that. Now, the only thing with fountain pens, it doesn't matter if it was a lever or a button system, they were really good at making lots of mess. Oh, and blobbing everywhere. Oh, no. See what I mean? Really messy. What you need is thicker ink, and then it wouldn't go everywhere. But the trouble is, with a nib, you really need thin ink, the sort of ink that blobs everywhere. Ladies, does your fountain pen go blobby blob blob when you try and write down the family fish and chip order? Yes? Well, introducing the amazing ballpoint pen. It's the sort of pen you can use every day. And why do we call it the ballpoint? Because it has a ball on its point. That's right, a ball on its point. It does. It really does. A teeny weeny ball right on its point. Oh no, I said a teeny weeny ball. Oh no, a really teeny weeny ball. Right on the point of the pen is a teeny weeny ball. It sits on the paper and the ink sits above. As you move your pen across the paper, the ball rolls and the ink gets on the ball at the top and is carried round to the bottom where it reaches the paper. It's the old ballpoint pen that most people use these days. Oh, there are other ways of getting the ink out. Like a felt tip pen sort of soaks up the ink. But it's the ballpoint that's the most popular. How popular? How many of these pens do you think they sell in one day? Did you guess 14 million? And I can still never find one. So people have been making their mark on surfaces for thousands of years, but it took the invention of something like ink and something like paper before we got something like a pen, the quill. After the quill, they invented something that could hold a lot more ink, the fountain pen. And then of course came the mighty ballpoint pen. And that can hold a stickier kind of ink that doesn't get everywhere and make a big mess. Unless of course you leave it in the washing. If you'd like information about this program, or if you have questions you'd like answered, you can write to us at Susie's World, PO Box 34307, Birkenhead, Auckland, or head to the website, www.susie.co.nz. Hey, people say the modern pen will just keep on writing and writing and writing. I thought I'd test it out. See how far this pen will go. If you've got a better idea of how to do it, let me know, will you? But while I'm out there investigating, I thought I might go and pick up that fish and chip order. Oh, if only I'd written it down. Never mind. See you next time. Ka kite. You can just write and write, and eventually some ink will come out and you'll be able to write. Let's see what happens when I write with it. Because the ink is all dried out in this hot, hot sun.
This program was brought to you by New Zealand on Air.